so hey everyone welcome back to my channel so in this video i'm going to show you five must try python projects that you can build in a single day and i'm going to walk you through the code and explain it to you how does the project work so without further delay let's get started so here's our bmi calculator so enter weight in kilograms i'll enter 45 enter height in meters two meters let's run this it shows i'm underweight so our first project is a bmi calculator so this simple program helps you calculate your body mass index based on your weight and height so first we are printing a welcome message to the user now we need some input from the user their weight and height so input function prompts the user to enter some data here we are asking for their weight and height since the input function returns data as a string we convert it to a floating point number using float function this is very important because weight and height can be decimal values and we need to perform mathematical calculations with them so next we calculate the square of user's height because the BMI formula requires us to divide the weight by the square of the height and now we use user's weight and that squared height to calculate BMI. We then round off the number so it looks nice and neat. So let's figure out what this BMI means in terms of health. We start by initializing an empty string for the status variable. This will later store the BMI category. So these statements allow us to check which range the calculated BMI falls into. Underweight if the BMI is 18.4 or less. Normal if the BMI is between 18.5 and 24.9. And overweight if the BMI is between 25 and 39.9. And lastly, obese if the BMI is greater than 40. Now it's time to show the user the BMI and the corresponding status. We use fstrings here to neatly format our output. This allows us to embed the BMI and status variables directly within the string. So finally, we thank the user for using our BMI calculator. So welcome to a countdown timer. Enter a number. I enter 10, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. Five, four, three, two, one. So next we have got a countdown timer. So this one is a lot of fun and a great way to get familiar with loops and the time module in Python. So first we are importing the time module. This module has a bunch of cool features that help us work with time, like pausing the program for a few seconds. So now we are defining a function called timer. So we need to pass a number in our timer function, which is the starting point for our countdown. So now we start by adding one to the number and we set up a loop. This loop will keep running as long as number isn't zero. The countdown will continue until it hits zero. Inside this loop, we use time.sleep function. This tells the program to pause for one second before continuing. After each second, we subtract 1 from number. This is how the countdown gets smaller and smaller. Finally, we print the current number so the user can see the countdown happening live. Now, we ask the user to enter a number, the starting point of our countdown. We are using input function to get this number from the user. And in function to make sure it's treated as an integer. So if the user types in 10, the countdown will start from 10. And here we call our timer function and give it the number the user entered. And lastly, we are printing thank you message to the user. So this is the demo of our palindrome checker. Let's enter a palindrome phrase and check this. It shows it's a palindrome. So our next project is a palindrome checker. This one is a pretty neat and all about string manipulation. A palindrome, if you didn't know, is a word or phrase that reads the same backward as forward. 
So now we are importing a scale lowercase from the string module. This is a string that contains all the lowercase letters from A to Z. It's going to help us ensure that we only focus on the valid letters when checking for a palindrome. So here we create a list called valid characters. So this is our freaking Python. It takes all the letters in ASCII lowercase and it unpacks them into a list. So valid characters ends up being a list containing each letter of the alphabet as an individual element. So this will help us filter out any characters that are not part of the alphabet like punctuation or numbers. So next we are asking the user to enter a word or phrase. This input is stored in a variable called text. So once we have the user's input, we immediately remove all the spaces. So here where we get rid of any characters that are not in our valid character list. We loop through each letter in the text. If the letter isn't found in valid characters, we remove it from the text by replacing it with an empty string. So now we are reversing the cleaned up text. In Python, this is a slicing technique that reverses the string. And finally, we are comparing the original clean text with the reverse text. If they are the same, that means the word or phrase reads the same forward and backward. So it's a palindrome. So we then print a message to let the user know. So if they are not the same, we print that it's not a palindrome. And if they are the same, we print that it's a palindrome. So this is the demo of our Simon color game. So let's enter gray, gray, brown, gray, brown, orange. Let's say I forgot, I'll enter red and I lost. So now let's move on to our next project, which is Simon color game. So here's the idea. The game generates a random sequence of colors and the player has to remember and repeat the sequence. Each time you get it right, the sequence gets longer. If you mess up, the game ends. So we start by importing two important modules. The random module will help us randomly select colors from our list. We are using OS module to clear the screen after each round. So the user can't cheat while looking back at previous colors. So next we define a list called color list that contains all the colors our game will use. These are the colors that will be randomly selected and displayed to the user. So here we are setting up two important variables. Score, this starts at zero and will keep track of the user score. And correct answer will show the sequence of colors the computer shows. The user has to match the sequence exactly to keep playing. And we are using a while true loop to keep the game running continuously until the player makes a mistake. Inside the loop, we pick a random color from color list using random.choice function. We then display this color to the user. Each time the loop runs, a new color is added to the sequence. So now we are updating correct answer by adding the new color to the exact existing sequence. This way, the sequence gets longer with each round. So here, we are asking user to enter entire sequence of colors they have seen so far. We are using upper method to convert their input to uppercase to make it easier to compare with the stored sequence. And replace method to remove any spaces in their input to ensure they don't accidentally mess up the sequence with extra spaces. So this command clears the console screen. If the user's input matches the sequence, we increase the score by one. And finally, we are checking if the user's answer matches the correct sequence. If it doesn't, the game ends. And we are printing a message telling them they lost and display their scores. So we are going to create this. What does GPU stands for? An intergraphical um, processing unit. Is the Python name of programming language? No. Is hashing of learning? Yes. What does CPU central processing unit? Are pointer chips in Python? No. 
the spy can support object on the Yes. What does object stand for? I think it's object oriented oh dead programming. What does RAM stand for? Random access memory. Yes. No. And my score is 70. Wanna play again? No. So our fifth project is a quiz game. This one is a great way to practice list, loops, and conditional statements. We're starting by creating a list called QA list which contains tuples. Each tuple has two elements, a question and its correct answer. This list will be our question bank for the quiz. We are using a while true loop to keep the game running. Inside the loop, we initialize the score variable to zero at the beginning of each round. This will keep track of how many questions the player answers correctly. We use a for loop to go through each question in a QA list. For each question, we are extracting the question text and the correct answer from the tuple. We are asking the user the question using input function and converting their answer to lowercase using lower method. We are then comparing the user's answer to the correct answer. If they match, we increase the score by 1. After all the questions have been asked, we calculate the score as a percentage. We do this by dividing the score by the total number of questions, multiplying by 100 and rounding the result. We are printing out the player's score. So we are asking the user if they want to play again. If the user inputs in, the break statement exists the while loop. Ending the game. If they input anything else, the game starts again. When the user decides to stop playing, we print a thank you message.